Hey guys, welcome back to AFK Journey. In today's video, we're talking about the Epic Hero Selector we get from seven days of login and who you want to be choosing. Now, we do have the four options in this one, being Iron, Rowan, Igor, and Brutus. I'm going to go through all of these characters, uh, talk about their, the way they work and their pros and cons and why you might want to pick them up. And then I'm going to give you guys what I will be doing on my account. So we're going to jump over into the character page just because it's easier to look at the characters there. And we're going to have a chat about them. Now, the first one I want to talk about is Brutus because Brutus is the one I originally thought I was going to get on my account. Account, I have changed my mind. I'm no longer going to get him. Basically, what Brutus is, is this skill. This is all you really care about when looking at Brutus. Uh, he gets Im immunity to death for five seconds, uh, which is fantastic. When he takes a fatal blow, instead of dying, he gets five seconds of invincibility. This means he's a solid seven second reliable tank. Two seconds to get down to that point, five seconds to live. And what Brutus's purpose is in the game is super high deficit pushing against burst enemy teams. And that's where, because he can guarantee you that protection so your back row can do whatever setup they need to do. Now, I was originally going to get a copy of Brutus because one copy of Brutus is amazing. More than one copy of Brutus. Like if you have a Brutus, ignore Brutus, do not get Brutus. Not worth it. Not worth the dupes. But the reason I wanted to get one copy, because he is often used in like the highest deficit pushing. When you look at super high deficit AFK stage pushing, people are using Brutus or Antandra or both. Then they're using Smokey. Every team uses Smokey. Uh, then you're using a combination of, and every team's using Cecilia as the carry damage dealer. And then you're looking at things like Coco and Rowan for other options as well. And those core units basically make up every high deficit AFK stage pushing team in the early game. But for me personally, I don't have a Smokey yet. I can't do these kind of pushes uh, because I don't have a Smokey. But on the other side, I also have a highly ascended, um, what's his face? Thorin, dude, name left me for a sec. So because my main tank has had a decent amount of dupes, I'm not as fussed on getting the Brutus. If I had a Smokey right now, I would consider picking up this Brutus and then just pushing with the Mola Cecilia comp uh, to push those high deficits and keep climbing those AFK stages. But because I don't have the Smokey yet, I really need to get him. I'm going to leave Brutus out of here. But later on, let's say I do want a Brutus copy because I pull my Smokey and stuff like that. Brutus is available from the arena shop. So he's an option for me to get later on i can target him no matter what so i can get him if i want to so that is brutus like i said i'm not going through the rest of his kit because this is pretty much what he's used for like he doesn't really get used outside of that the next unit we have is rowan now rowan general recommendations for rowan if you don't have rowan yet he's a good unit to pick up if you do have rowan don't get him from this that is the general one i want to talk about why if we look at his ultimate his ultimate generates energy for your allies energy is good doesn't matter what his stats are like you don't need you don't need higher you don't need mythic plus to get this effect the other thing is and for those that played afk rainy you'd remember rowan when he came out he was always one you rushed to mythic because you wanted to get his signature item to get his energy potion in this game he gets his energy potion from leveling up you don't need his exclusive equipment this is the craziest thing to me. So if you look at level three of this skill, Rowan also places any po an energy potion when battle starts. Listen, I'm not going to read it. Basically, when an ally near the potion gets to 600 energy, they will instantly get topped off by this potion and they will use an ult. So the ally who gets the 600 energy first instantly ults, which is which is amazing. It's a really, really strong effect in certain situations if you play it right, but he gets it through just leveling up. This one has energy stealing. He gets it through leveling up. Also, this heal is based on max HP. It does have attack scaling, but hey, it still has a fixed amount of HP that it's going to heal based on your ally's max HP. That's fantastic. Let's take a look at his exclusive equipment. Basically, what it provides is extra defensive capabilities on his potion, which is nice. It's more of a luxury, not a necessity is the way I describe this, this uh, exclusive equipment. We're Whereas a lot of other characters have exclusive equipments as a necessity that you must have to make them function. And that's why Rowan is a one copy character and that's it. So if you don't have a Rowan, you can consider him. But once again, like Brutus, Rowan can be obtained from the arena store as well. So, you know, obviously you do want to get Cecilia copies from the arena store, but he is definitely one you can pick up from there anyway, uh, if you're in a pinch and you desperately decide you want one later. So, you know, he is definitely an option but is available from the arena store. The next one we're going to look at is Eagle. Um, now, Eagle is a unit that wants dupes. So this isn't a case like Brutus and Rowan where, oh, you know, if you don't have one copy of him, pick up one copy of him. No, this is a character that you really want to dupe if you want to use him. Basically, what Eagle does, I'm going to TLDR it. 
He summons a bunch of tombstones, and as long as a tombstone exists on the battlefield, he cannot die. He Instead of dying, he will jump to another tombstone, and the tombstone he was on will get destroyed. And this is just incredibly frustrating. He also has very decent AoE damage. So due to his invincibility type effects, he is very strong in PvP. He's a good PvP unit. Um, also on top of that, he has AoE damage. His ult is an AoE. His tombstones like deal AoE damage as well. So he is a good AoE damage dealer uh, in things like battle drills for guilds and stuff like that. Uh, he's going to be effective in that sort of stuff as well. Now, he is also one of those characters that I think is a dark horse to get incredibly boosted power-wise when future characters come out just due to the way he has this really unique cheesy mechanic of basically not dying and always um you know jumping to tombstones i don't know what it is but i feel like there could be something that comes into the game and like this isn't me saying i don't know what but i actually know no no i have no idea but i just feel like they, they could introduce characters that have some sort of mechanic that interacts with the way he functions that can make him absolutely broken I definitely think that he, he has that dark horse capability. Um, and the reason you want to dupe him as well is one, so he gets more stats, so he dies slower, so that he has more tombstones to keep infinitely hopping. His exclusive equipment also gives healing reduction, um, which is a really nice effect to get on enemies, uh, when you, especially when you fight some of those high healing teams and stuff like that. But really the reason you want to dupe him is just that pure stat throughput that he needs uh, to be able to function a bit better. So that is why you want dupes on him. But for me, he just doesn't quite have the wood over what Eron offers. And that's why I am personally going to choose Eron. So let's jump into Eron and talk about it. Now, Eron is a crazy, crazy unit. Um, but he feels really horrible until you get him to Mythic Plus. The reason being, with his exclusive furniture, also the thing I forgot to mention, Igor also available through the arena store. The only one of these four units that is not available through the arena store and you can't guarantee copies of is Eron. That also has to put him up a little bit, like up an extra rung on the priority in my opinion. The reason I say Mythic Plus is where this guy shines is because his Mythic Plus, like I said earlier with like Rowan, like he doesn't need it. He needs this to be a fully functional character. His first ult doesn't cost energy. That means he can just straight away ult at the start of the battle. Now, what does his ult do? It's a vortex that has a center point and any enemies within two tiles of that center point. So it's not like literally has to be like on him. It's a center point chosen. So he can, it's really actually quite broad and you can normally wrap up every enemy uh, except for lunges and stuff like that. And it groups them. So you get to do that at the very start of battle and immobilize them, which is honestly just a huge effect in itself. And if that's all he had in his kit, where he could alter the start of battle and group all enemies, it's fantastic. We've seen it in games. We've seen it in AFK Arena, idle games like this. Like it's always a powerful effect to be able to put manipulate the positions of enemies all to be on top of each other. The reason being, we do get uh when you look at attacks and damages and in general, if you have an AOE attack that hits the entire field, it's normally going to be weaker than an AOE attack that hits a very narrow portion of the field, and which is also probably going to be weaker than a single target attack. And that's the way damage scales. You sacrifice a range of damage for amount of damage. And as we get more characters with narrow range AOE attacks that are powerful, that you can then reliably hit the entire enemy team with a small range AOE attack, this just becomes even better. But that's not all he has. Uh, if we look at this one, he has magic defense shred which at the moment, magic defense isn't the biggest, like we, like magic attacking meta isn't the biggest meta, but maybe if we get some really crazy magic attackers, like at the moment, a lot of the meta is ignoring defense. Um, but if we have magic attackers that then come in and be like, okay, magic attacking is the way to go. At the moment, Iron's downside is what he's good in arena, he's good in campaign, he's good in battle drills, but he's weak at bosses. But if we get a magic attacker meta, then he could creep up into that meta. Now, with Brutus, Brutus does have physical defense shred, so that also is a thing, but we have Kruger for that too, so it kind of makes Brutus fall off. I just wanted to touch in on that. But then on top of that, we also have an additional, uh, with his um, with his Max Supreme Plus, we get more defense shred. So we get a good, sorry, magic defense shred. So we get a good chunk of magic defense shred from this guy as well. Then we have survivability. Obviously, he's going to be pretty front, front and center in the battle to do his grouping and stuff like that. 
but he does get immune uh, he gets mitigation with a shield and extra dodge rating on top of that over here he gets um range defense so he has the dodge to avoid a lot of physical attacks close range and then he gets the uh, range defense as well and because you're going to be duping him to go ahead and get this um this exclusive equipment where he can alter the start of the battle he's going to have better stats as well so between all this he has the grouping at the very start of the battle he has pretty good defensive capabilities to survive to be able to you know dish out some aoe damage as well as just the grouping effect then he's also shredding the magic defense i just feel like this kit is just too good but like i said he feels pretty average until you get him to mythic plus because that's where the the real magic comes out with him and as for future the game in the future i feel like he's the most future proof unit out of these ones to pick up reason being this the grouping effect always viable um He's the only, I think he's the only magic defense shredder in the game at the moment. And it's pretty high values considering his Supreme Plus extends on that effect, which is fantastic. And then he's the only one not available through the arena shop. So if we go over here and we go look at the uh, arena shop, if I go over here, Emporium, arena store. Uh, you can see here, so we literally, we have Brutus, we have Rowan, we have Igor in here. We do not have Iron. So getting copies of Iron is hard. I've got two copies on my account so far just through pulling. Um, so getting those copies is going to be much harder than if later on, like for instance, if later on I decide I want a copy of Brutus, well then I just go ahead and I buy a copy of Brutus. Yes, it might cost me a copy of Cecilia, but at least then I have the Brutus that I'm looking for. And that is the way I'm thinking about it. And that is why personally, I think Euron is the best unit out of the bunch. I think Rowan and Brutus are good at one copy. Igor is definitely viable, but just doesn't quite keep up with Euron in my opinion. And that is why I am choosing Euron. He's just a fantastic unit with the future proofness. Plus he's not available in the stores. So he's harder to get a copy on and you can always pick the others up in a pinch if you really want to. Now, maybe if you are going Igor main, focus uh you pick up the eagle because then you're getting another dupe you're getting him ascended faster yeah perfectly fine like i said if you don't have a rowan copy yet you can go ahead and pick up a rowan copy it's perfectly fine um because he's a fantastic unit same with bruce but like i said i like having the option that i can get these guys from the arena store and i if i want to get my ear on to uh that mythic plus point where i need to get him to to have the full viability oh there we go we've got we got enough of these i didn't even notice that but like I said, I, I haven't cared about upgrading my Euron because it doesn't really matter at this stage because I can't, I, I'm not using him until he's Mythic Plus. So essentially from here for me, I've had two copies of him. I need to get two more to get him to, uh, to Legendary Plus. Then I can use Acorns for Mythic and then I need two more copies to get him to Mythic Plus. So if I pick up this copy from the chest, all I need to do is summon three more copies of Euron and then I have him at Mythic Plus and then I can start using him for those purposes. But like I said, um, he is definitely my pick of the bunch. The dude is just too, just it's it's too safe to get those dupes of him for me um and that is basically where i am looking at but that is gonna be it for this one sorry i rambled a bit on iron but i do really like this character and like i said to get him to be functional you want those dupes and that is what we're looking at but as always guys the best of luck with your summons unfortunately we don't get that steady income of 10 free anymore but we do get a free epic which is probably uh, not no, probably definitely better unless you're getting real lucky and getting triple epics in your summons but hey it's the last day of it i wish it was a 14 day login because i want more summons but uh we're just gonna have to sweat anyway guys as always thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i'll look forward to seeing the next one cheers